Hey everybody, welcome to Friday once again. It's DVTV in space, and we got me and Israel. We're yeah. the OG here, but oh. and we've got some <laughs> special guests today. We got Angel, and we've got Jelinski. And we're gonna hear what some of the things that they're they're working. I'm outnumbered here <laughs> by the guys today. <laughs> yeah. so, it depends on how we identify, Tammy. Okay, you exactly. being a black woman, and I'm gonna be. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to be an Asian man today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Asian man. That's hot. <laughs> you can you have the freedom to choose. That's exactly. Right. Here it's at my better. studio, y'all can use whatever bathroom y'all want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're going to all be transracial, transgender, trans... Form trans financial, <laughs> transistors. Right. Trans trans no, we all want. We're, We're going to be transistors. Trans okay. as, we, as we say from my, my trans movie sisters. trailer, this is the place for some transaction. Yeah. Transformers. <laughs> trans We're going to be all those things today. We're going to be what we want to be today. That's and right. we can because this is DVTV in space, and I'm the boss here, and I said so, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's why we Actually, love I'm not the boss, but I say I'm. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I know, right? Shit. Yeah, I, I, this is where I just get to say whatever I feel like saying. Well, <laughs> and I don't have Brandy here to say, the views of Tammy Nash. <laughs> 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 right, exactly. So we're going to talk a little bit first in this first segment about um, what's going on this weekend. There's a lot of stuff on our calendar. We've got um, our buddy Brad Pritchett is going to be at the DVT, um, BDT, Black Tie Dinner, Sneak Peek today with the DVTV on the scene. Mm -hmm. And we try to get him here as much as we can, but he's just very Brad busy. Is very busy. <laughs> yeah, but he's usually, he was, I, I mean, I was going to say he's a regular, but he's not necessarily a regular. He's, he's a DVTV regular. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's that starts at 730 at the Renaissance Hotel on North Simmons Freeway, 2222 North Simmons, $35. And the money from this, just like the money from the big dinner in November, it all goes to the beneficiaries. And again... <coughs> Half the money they raise goes to the HRC Foundation, and half the money they raise stays here with our local beneficiaries. It's one of the only black tie dinners like this, in the or it is the only one right. that does that. So that's that's always a good cause. Definitely. Um, Paul J. Williams, the 701 Club, a holy perspective on everything benefiting a holy perspective on everything benefiting Cathedral of Hope and Legacy Counseling. Now, is he going to be doing that one as the church lady? Yeah, he's okay. Helen Holy. Helen Holy, I think, is her name. That that act is so professional and so good and so yeah. funny. I'm so and glad he's still doing it. That's 7 o'clock tonight at Cathedral of Hope. Um, let's see. Transpose? Transpose. Tell us about Transpose. Yeah. So Transpose is a project by Artitude. Um, they're doing a documentary that explores the challenges that and triumphs of transgender people. Um, as they transition, uh, it's happened at the Studio Movie Grill, 4 to 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. This says the new Studio Movie Grill. I wasn't aware that there was a new Studio Movie Grill, but 13933 <laughs> North Central Expressway. Oh, so. I think that one's the newer one. That one, it's located at 75 and Spring Valley. Yes. Wasn't there already one at 75? No, there was one at Spring Valley. I mean, I'm sorry, 75 and Royal. And that one's still there, too. So it's just like two miles up the road. Now they're busy. Okay. They got yeah. a lot of people. They got to expand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so well, tickets are available at eventbrite.com, and it's a free event. So check it out if you can. We have a question already, Tammy. Yeah, I bet we will be discussing that uh, probably during the second segment. We're going to spend the first segment here talking about just events that are coming up, and we have one very special event coming up. But then we've got a lot of um, important and more serious things to talk about as, as well. Yes, thank you, Laura, for that question. I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that we want to talk about is what's going on on the coast. Um, if we have anybody down on the coast who's, who might be watching, or if you know f people down there, make sure everybody's safe. Uh, I just heard that Her Harvey has been upgraded to a Category 3. Oh. I think the last time we had a Category 3 hit land in the United States was, I think they said it was Wilma? I think it was 2005. So we haven't had this big of a storm hit land since in a very long time so oh, wow. and it's hitting yeah. like the the gulf or like where in texas is it hitting um it's the whole gulf coast it's, okay. i mean it's it's big enough it's that it's kind of part of it's going to hit all of the gulf coast but i think primarily the main target right now is corpus christi wow yeah. and it's going to be coming up and coming up san antonio's in the path austin is going to get some rain some you know i don't know about wind but they're supposed to get flooded flooding rain which leads me to the next topic is Austin Pride 
festival and parade were supposed to be this weekend, I think tomorrow, and they have been canceled no. because they're I concerned for the security and the safety of people. I've seen some talk. I don't know if they announced a possible new date, but there was some talk on Facebook about it being the weekend of Dallas Pride and the girls oh. were not having it. No, <laughs> that's what I said. That's what somebody told me. They said, hey, look, this has been happening. I said, oh, and, so, and then it says, they're dis the, the, the statement says we're discussing possible dates, you know, in September and October. So yeah. I was putting it on our, our blog, and I'm like, psst. Austin. <laughs> yeah. 16th, 17th. Don't do that. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you know, now, when you say Austin, I picture something that's kind of like in the middle of the state. Is it, is the hurricane that big that it's yeah. going to hit to that extreme to where they have to cancel? And I mean, yeah. the pride? And then also with it growing strength, and it's just, just, just upgraded to the Category 3, they're not even saying that that's the final upgrade. It still wow. may get stronger, and so that... Category 3 is w the lowest wind for a category three are 111 miles an hour. Oh my God. And it goes cool. up to from 111 to 135 is a category three. So let me see here. I'll show you it's if I can find. So what is that? So up. where, where's the heart yeah. of it right now? I think <laughs> it's off right off the coast. The, the eye of oh. the hurricane is off the coast, kind of looking right at, at Corpus. Gah. I have friends already coming up from Houston. They're texting me because they're leaving, trying to get out of the way before anything does go down. What so. about mm. uh, like San Antonio? San Antonio is just like 100 miles in or something. Yeah. Somebody, I'm not sure, but that's what somebody told me. It's like 45 minutes from Austin, so I'm sure it's going to oh, be right. impacted as well. Yeah. There you go. I'll just show you this. You can, not gonna, it's not going to show on. Come on, dang it. Uh-oh. There. That's what it looks like. Okay. Oh. She's this massive. is tech. It's huge. It fills the whole Gulf I right can now. Show the camera. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it fill it fills the whole Gulf of Mexico right now when you see it. When you they showed a picture from, taken from the Jeez. space shuttle. There it is. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> they showed a pi picture taken from the space shuttle and I mean it's just there's nothing but white swirly clouds oh, over man, the whole that's horrible. area. It's and horrible. the thing so, about hurricanes is you know, all you can do is just prepare for it because there's nothing you can do to destroy run. it. You what know? you do is right. you run. Yeah, or just run. run. You know, unless you're you're, helpless. unless there's sharks in there, and then you have to <laughs> go up in the space shuttle <laughs> and drop a bomb, right? Shark drop a bomb right shark in the middle. Shark NATO. NATO. <laughs> they made like three of those films. Oh, no, girl, five. 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 Six oh. is coming. I've watched them all during a <laughs> marathon. Tammy, I was wow. about to say, I'm a little concerned that you know this. <laughs> oh, oh, and Shannon. And yeah, Shannon. Oh, yeah. well, well, the, movies Shannon. Actually, the movies are actually pretty entertaining. Like, <laughs> they I, are I have never seen oh, any oh. of them. Man, because I just thought it was the most ridiculous concept. It is. It is. It is absolutely like, I kinda, ridiculous. I kind of want to make a movie with uh, dolphins. You know, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. I, I had this but idea. Dolphins. Friendly, though, so. I had this whole idea about <laughs> uh, 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 a Sahara movie for the Sci-Fi Channel. Sci-Fi Channel has a, uh, a a formula for all their movies. You know, there's always the hero who is ex-military or law enforcement. And disgruntled for some reason. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's in the movie. The yeah. heroine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that is where his career is going. Then yeah. there's the heroine who is a scientist. Oh, I thought you meant the drug. <laughs> not that. No. <laughs> the he, the no. hero, female hero. You got it. Um, who is always a scientist and always wears shorts and a tank top. If she has on a tank top, she's the... <laughs> she's smart. She's the one. Yeah. That's usually the one I think is really hot. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have the, all the other hot girls and guys who are going to... Get killed off Get early. eaten, exploded, acid burn, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then you have the arch villain who is going to make it all the way to the end before he dies some horrible... That's bloody gory yeah wow. but he was asking for it i didn't know there he was a deserved formula it. Yeah, he deserved it. oh yeah crazy. almost every one of them and i had a whole <laughs> script written all about these penguins <laughs> <laughs> seriously now sounds like a space studio project <laughs> exactly <laughs> penguins in the south pole who the you know global warming releases melts the ice and releases these ancient bacteria <laughs> that Mutate these penguins, and they're gonna be That's like awesome. mutant zombie swimming penguins. That does sound like a space studio project. And so they're yeah. all Pond yes. Pond Ponzi's, and they're all coming this way. And the hero is gonna be a gay marine who was kicked out for being gay. <laughs> and oh no, he's rewriting something. Sorry. Uh, is he stealing my idea? <laughs> <laughs> and then with the the heroine, the doctor is gonna be a trans woman. 
and they <laughs> Shannon wants to act. In it. <laughs> <laughs> all about it. Make him the king the, penguin. The penguin. Make him the king penguin, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was my idea. So I, I kind of like it. Right. I, I think it would like be it. fun. It would be a great because it's well, so ridiculous. Yes, well, exactly. I'll take, a, I'll take a starring role. Too. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, what did you notice? Not just a role, a but starring. a starring oh, role. Go. Hey, I, I could be the lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> I would never cast you as a lesbian. Okay. Nobody <laughs> says Butch is me. <laughs> Speaking of Phil the lesbian, we're going to go to, we're going to talk real quick uh, because Monday, speaking of things that are coming up, Monday's a big one. Monday we have the premiere of Israel Luna's Kicking Zombie Ass for Jesus. It's going to be at the Texas Theater. We're going to have to go to um, break here in a minute. <laughs> so we're going to, um, but we're going to give away two tickets to the premiere, Okay. And all you have to do is answer the trivia question. It's a two-part question. Answer one or both parts. Answer it by commenting online. First person to get it right, besides me, because I know the answer, gets these two tickets, and we'll get them to you. Um, so Israel's going to ask the question. During the break, you're going to see video from the film, yet another exclusive yes. video from the film. And then we'll be back to talk more about the movie and other things. So Excellent. ask yeah, your and, question and answer it on the comments uh, of the of the live feed. OK, Mike, the question is way back when in early 2000, uh, in the early 2000s, 1990s, 19, <laughs> late 1990s. Uh, who was the person who wrote the first article about me and what was the article about? What project of mine was it about? You can answer both of them or either one. OK, and we're, we're going to. First person who gets it, do a Va Dallas Voice live stream. Type in your answer there. One or both parts. And All we're right. going to watch a clip of Zombie. And here we go with zombie, kicking zombie ass. Here we go. For Jesus.
Uh -huh. Hey, welcome back. How did y'all enjoy that? That was the... There. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clip from zom Kicking Zombie Ass from Jesus, for Jesus, or from Jesus. Jesus, or around <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Zom oh, zombies and genius. All that works. All that works. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. So that's going to premiere Monday. Tell us time, place, all that good stuff. Yeah, it is going to be at the Texas Theater in Oak Cliff. It's going to be Monday, August 28th at the... Texas Theater, and we are not only screening Kicking Zombie Ass for Jesus, but we are screening two other short films before it. One of them is Shannon's film called The Devil's Chain. Yay, Shannon. Oh, that's right. I forgot that was your film. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Shannon's film. And then the second one is um, from Angel Rose Marquez. Her film is called Lesbian Strippers from Hell. All right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It's going to be, a, and the two, those two are short. Mm -hmm. Shorter films, yeah, the, and yours um, is about an hour and a half, right? Right, yeah. Mine is uh, 91 minutes. Uh, Devil's Chain is 12 minutes, and then uh, Lesbian Strippers from Hell is 17 minutes. Good. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you don't, y'all don't want to, don't want to miss being there for this. Like I said, we have two tickets. We're waiting on answers. Yeah. Should I ask uh, it again or ask it again? All right. So the the trivia question is, and if you win, you get these two tickets. Is who wrote? the first article ever about me in the late 90s and or what was my very first project that that article was about yeah okay now y'all answer this question you have until the end of the show which somewhere around five o'clock <laughs> <laughs> yeah. be a little late because i think we got started late today, yeah we did. so but and be sure to be there tickets are ten dollars tickets are available at la luna entertainment.com online and you can get them at the door unless it's sold out, man. So yeah. Luna. And com. Yeah, LaLunaEntertainment.com. It just and rolls off the tongue. Uh, so awesome. Thank you. So it's La Luna. <laughs> and we also changed <laughs> the La pricing. Luna. Before, it was $15 to get in and then $10 if you dressed up as a zombie. We have changed it. Now oh. it's $10 to get in, but it's free if you dress up as a zombie. Oh. oh and you okay, have to be a convincing okay. zombie. And speaking of, but we also, not of zombie, but <laughs> of the movie, we have, uh, you know, Angel is That's one right. of the That's main what actors. That's we have Angel as one of the one of the stars of the film, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that. And you haven't seen it yet, right? No, no. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like I said, I'm really nervous to watch it. Ah, and sorry. you know, Tammy, this is the the strangest part because you know you were talking about the promos earlier. Is one of the promos <laughs> is of the character Phil Philomena, <laughs> who was played by Angel in the project. The character is a lesbian. It's okay. You can use whatever pronoun. I'm not gonna get mad. <laughs> so at the time. <laughs> You know, Angel identified as a lesbian, and so now that's different. So, you know, it's just been kind of funny to talk and about. I want to, that's, that kind of leads us into to letting you talk to, talk to us a little bit, Angel, about the project you're working on and about the transition from Phil the lesbian to, yeah, to this. And how, how talk about, is it, yeah. you were saying it's, it's hard to watch yourself back then. It is, it is. Um, I've seen um, maybe two snippets of it. Mm hmm. And uh, the first time I saw was one of the fight scenes that I have in the movie. Um, I literally, I watched it. I, the minute I came out on my phone, I had turned away. <laughs> I was like, you, you've got to be, you've got to be kidding me. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I, I, okay. And, and, you know, it took me a minute to, to actually concentrate and watch it. I actually had to warn some of my friends who have met me now. Uh -huh. I'm like, look, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, uh, I, I look a little different. I sound different, you know? And yeah. so um, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting, especially being, I mean, I'm still in the first year of my transition. Uh -huh. So I'm still going through a lot mentally, emotionally, uh -huh. physically to throw this on top of like, oh, look, here you are. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. Like, because hey. at the time when I cast you, you identified as a lesbian. Yes. And then, you know, and the movie was shot about four years ago. Uh -huh. um, it's been a long post-production process. And since then, you have transitioned and now you are a straight male. Um, yes. So I just want everyone to know that me as the director, <laughs> I know this. I know what's going on. And when I'm promoting. No, it, he doesn't. <laughs> and when I'm. Get him. Yeah. When I'm promoting the film, you know, I'm saying this is Phil. She's a lesbian. She will kick your ass. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I hope people who know you personally know that I know the difference. I, it's okay. I've taken care of that. Okay. Don't okay, worry about good. it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> how do you and feel? anybody who bothers you, I'll take care of it. Right. Angel, there'll be, there'll be someone with a bat waiting for you. Oh, She's that, taking that care of it. <laughs> how do you feel about talking about your um, self prior to your transition? Because I've, I've talked to some individuals and, you know, they are shut that part of themselves off. Yeah. That has a lot to do with my show. But, um, Tell us about that, too. It is what it is. I don't. I don't think anything of it. 
actually, it, I, I have such a sense of humor about it. it it's just like when Tammy was, you know, kind of talking about it, she chuckled. I do the same thing. It, it is what it is. You, you come from something. You don't come from nothing. And that's what a lot of people need to know. Being who you were, whether that was you or not, being physically who you are is your beginning. It's still part of your journey. You cannot cut it off because everything that you went through, everything, well, I can say personally, everything that I went through as a, as a lesbian still made me the man that I am today. Hmm. And a lot of people are not understanding that. A lot of people are having a hard time with accepting who they are because they cut that off. Because there are some questions that can be answered by he or she. Mm -hmm. That's why I always, re I sound so crazy sometimes. I refer, my, refer to myself as two people, you know, because I was two people. Sure, yeah. You know, and so, and coming out, um, it was funny because I did write this um, thing and I titled it Condolences to Her. Mm. I went through somewhat of a grieving process because I didn't know how to let her go because she was there the whole time. How, how can you do that? It's still a part of you. You know what I mean? So a lot, you know, that's a lot of what I want to discuss, you know, and stuff. So well, I don't I'm, know if that makes sense. Tell, tell us what about the project. You're, are you going to do a program here? I am. I am. Um, Israel's helping me out with it um, because he's the brains and I'm not. I, <laughs> I, I just like to lift heavy shit. So <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Um, so uh, pertaining to what I was talking about, um, what I found to be the easiest part of this transition was coming out. Mm -hmm. Um then every trans person is, is left with, what now? What I found is a lot of trans people, not, not all of them, I know some of you guys are probably flipping me off right now, not all of them, <laughs> they're not very friendly. You know, they're so guarded mm -hmm. that they don't even, like you said, they don't even want to talk about it. So it's like, you know, for the babies, and I'm still a trans baby, what now? So I, you know, I sought the help of books, Mm -hmm. videos, um, online videos, shows, and they all spoke of memoirs and experiences, which didn't answer any of my technical questions about what now, where do I go? What do I do? Well, mm -hmm. what do I, what do I do if this happens? What do I, you know, nothing like that happened. There was a lot of bitching, a lot of this and that. And, you know, I'm sorry. I, I don't have a lot of sympathy for stuff like that. <laughs> so excuse my facial expressions, but you know, it's just a lot of, um, just experiences. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know. And what I did come across something interesting I was going to talk to you about. One of my friends came up and was like, can I ask you some questions? Don't be mad. And I was like, what? She's like, I have so many trans friends and they will not allow me to ask. Mm -hmm. So how can the community as a trans person, how can you expect the community and the rest of the world to understand who and what you are to the world if you're not answering their questions? And that's what my show is about. Cool. Okay. I will allow anybody to ask anything. There will be no, no limits to what you can ask. Just yeah. warning. I will answer. <laughs> yeah. I will answer. Don't, don't, don't ask something you don't want. Right. The answer. title. The title of my show is going to be Transistor Radio. Ah, yeah. That's cool. Because I just thought it was it was hilarious with that's what great. he said about the whole transistor thing, you know. And so, I just feel like you know I'm not a big I'm not I'm not big on attention. Like when you put that story on the cover, I was like, holy. <laughs> it's kind of kind of overwhelming. Like, huh? like, Are you kidding me? I thought I was going to get a little paragraph. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> you know, but you know, that was fine. That was fine. It needed to be done, you uh -huh. know. And um, the same with this. It needs to be done. I'm not looking for anything other than I want my guests to be educated, and with educating one person, that will spread. Okay. Are you going to have like other trans people come come on? Oh yeah, I'm going to have everything. Cool. If I can get. A conservative straight person to come on here who hates transgenders and and most people don't know i'm trans yeah that's true yeah and i come out to them on the show i want to i want them to see their reaction shannon make sure the delay is working that day <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. shannon knows i can take care of myself <laughs> be yeah. fine, i think know. so so that's, that, that's, that's what that's about you know that's i think be it'd a be a great show. service to the community that's gonna mm -hmm. be a great show and i think you're Definitely. right um a lot of people I think a lot of people come across as unfeeling or disc um, uh, bigoted or prejudiced against or just rude and stupid, but it's because they're uneducated. Exactly. Well, that's, yeah. you know, I've always said ignorance comes in two parts. You have your bigot, racist, just, you know, mm -hmm. big assholes. Then you have 
lack of knowledge. Those are two mm -hmm. completely different things. Exactly. It doesn't mean that they hate you. Right. It means they don't know how to approach you or right. how to deal with the they're situation. They're not stupid. They're ignorant. Ignorant means there's a lack of knowledge. Right. Yeah. Right. Also Educate. willful they, ignorance. You know, willful they choose, they choose, choose to, be to be stupid. Exactly. Living in ignorant bliss, as they say. Because I think we can apply that same concept, you know, whether it's transgender or to race as well. I've um, had some really interesting conversations in the past couple of months with Uber drivers. I had one guy, he was anti-black, anti-gay, and so I'm in the car and I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be an interesting ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you give him a bad well, rating? Well, it's funny you say that. I've compared it to that because I compared the trans movement to the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. even, you know, my transition, I mean, I identify technically as transgender because I didn't want to subscribe to the binary. So I'm gender nonconforming and, you know, that falling under that umbrella because I wanted to transition to freedom. You know, for me, it's, you know, being able to choose the reality that works for me, but also creating the space to educate folks because they may not know what's going on. Well, exactly. And I might, I might invite you on my show, by the way. You should. I, yeah, um, I well, one of the yeah, things that I've, I've found in researching everything um, is that I feel that all the differences in the walk of life is what makes us the same. And people are forgetting that. We all yeah. bleed the same. We're all human. We breathe. We have hearts. We have, you know, we're all the same. I don't know. I think I know some that don't have a heart. Oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> they march. He's right here. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> um, I think... Speaking of trans, can I also mention, because I was looking at the screen, you know, in the background, that Willem mm. Belli um, is going to be present at the screening as well. And Willem plays the lead, and Willem plays a transgender uh, female who is here up against the religious folk in the film as well. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting to me because you have transgender act actors, act actors and actresses, in this film, and um, you, it, how does Willem identify, or is, does Willem identify, or is Willem just Willem? <laughs> Willem, right, that's a good question. Um, yeah. Willem is a gay male. Okay. And who dresses does up, does drag as an entertainer. So okay. Willem is an entertainer, yeah. Okay, but Willem does not identify as trans. Correct. Okay. Correct. But there are there are people in the film other than Angel who are uh, are transgender. I'm yeah. not going to say who's what. I mean, if you know the people in the film, right. you'll know. But right. and some of the trans people in there are playing, exactly. quote, you know, biologically born whatever they identify as. Bi kind of biologically born bigot. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a great dynamic. Yeah. I don't even think about that I just cast good people. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay, I don't think we've got an answer to our question yet. Yeah, so I, I'm, I I'm might have a second question when we come back. A second question? Yeah. Oh, I was going to give them a hint. I was oh. going to say, yeah, it's pretty okay, obvious. Okay, let's, let's, <laughs> give, let's give a hint. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> let's, let's, let me give you all a hint. Um, the, the, the story he's, he's referring to in the, in the trivia question ran in Dallas Voice. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? Yeah, and the question is, who was the person that interviewed me? Right, and wrote the story. And wrote the story. And expects, you know, <laughs> a shout-out at the Academy Awards. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be back.
Okay, we're back. Um, one of the things we we did want to talk about this. Um, when did it happen? One night this week, there was a trans woman. I don't know when the shooting happened. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. I don't know when the shoot, shooting happened. There was a trans woman who um, she was married. Uh, she and her partner had children. Were raising children. I'm you know I don't know the, all of the details, but they were she and her partner, a man, were raising children, and they had apparently a transphobic. A neighbor who kept harassing them and harassing them and harassing them and they called um, on a disturbance and the cops went and the trans woman had apparently I, I don't know stabbed or cut the neighbor that was a that was harassing them said that this person had attacked them she defended herself with a knife she was distraught she had the knife in her hands and when the cops showed up, you know, she's there with a, with a knife. She's an armed person. So they drew their guns. Mm. And apparently, I, I don't know, the police report indicates that the woman swung the knife at the police and they shot her and killed her. Mm. And then um, be, um, one night this week, there was a crowd holding a vigil, a, a, a protest rally vigil in, for, her, for this woman. And... Um, Someone drove their car into the crowd. There were no. there were some injuries. What? There yeah. were some injuries. There was not anyone killed this time, but you know they're trying to say, oh, this person was surrounded by these people in the street, and he was trying trying to protect himself. And they're like, no, you watch the video, and this person's back here, and these other cars turn and go another way, and he comes like this so he can be up in the middle of it all. It was somebody. What did, what did this happen? You know what? I can't even remember where it happened. Yeah, I don't remember either. Laura, but if you're still watching this show, feel free to comment on anything. Please do. That we uh, is it Laura? Mike Laura? I think the name Laura, was Laura. Mike Laura. Oh, okay. So, so is it, does this make 18 or is it, what is it we're no? 17 the, the, she would be the 18th yeah, transgender. 18th. Yeah. R Guinevere River Song was 17 in Waxahachie. Yeah. Earlier wow. this month, TT Dangerfield in Atlanta was 16. And this this lady and I am embarrassed that I cannot remember the name and don't know more details about it. But she she was killed and would be number eighteen. Wow. Um, this one was a bit different. Most of them are, m you know, murders in that someone attacked someone. This involved the police, but doesn't matter. She's dead, and so wow. that's number eighteen. D has the her husband come out and said anything or made a statement? Because I'm wondering what his reaction is to all of this. I believe her her husband or partner, I don't know that they were married. Okay. I can't remember, but I'm going to say partner. But I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the police arrested the partner on something unrelated, like maybe a warrant, traffic warrant or something. I don't know <laughs> what it was. But I believe I read somewhere where her partner was picked up by police. Hmm. And, you know, I'm really curious to know where it is because that right. would probably explain a lot. Exactly. You know, like if it was Virginia or something. Well, you know. no, no, too. Like you have was. all these protesters with their flags and tiki torches or lighters or whatever they want. And <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and they're approached nonviolently. But you get, you know, other other movements, whether it's, you know, the Black Lives Matter, or, you know, transgender, whatever. And this is what happens. Yeah. I've seen you know? several posts on Facebook and several different media outlets about um, ads on Craigslist recruiting people to be protesters at these events. <laughs> and so I don't know if, you like, if these are like planned activities to incite the violence, or you know, if or they could be lured. Like, That's yeah. what you mean, right? Like being lured. Yeah. Yeah. That's just. It's Craigslist. Don't trust it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, 
Unless you're in men seeking men. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just okay. sex response. Casual okay. encounters. Um, <laughs> St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. St. Louis. Uh, the man is probably late 40s, early 50s. I have someone who says she knows the answer. Oh. To the, but she's listening on YouTube or she, she can't. She's not where she can comment. So if we don't have somebody besides Chad, you work for the newspaper and are home with pneumonia, so you cannot play, <laughs> Chad. That wouldn't be fair. <laughs> <laughs> pneumonia was the secret word of the day. Because uh. he has pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this, the, the man who did Mark Coleo, uh, I'm going to say late 40s, maybe early 50s, white guy. So, uh, surprise, surprise for that. <clears throat> Happened Wednesday night on Manchester Road, not far from the Transgender Memorial Garden, where the vigil was held. held her name was Kiwi Herring. That was yeah, it. Kiwi what Herring. Was her race? Hmm? What was her race? She was, I believe, a black woman. I'm not sure. I believe I saw a, p a, a photo of her. Um, you know, yesterday was the day that, um, remember the Jenny Jones show? Where there was a gay man on there, and the show was about Scott Amador was the gay man, yes. Yes, um, secret crushes, and so they, um, a straight guy was next to, to the guest, and the guest came out to him and said, "I've always had a crush on you," and oh, ha ha, everyone laughs, and it's really great. Two days later, the guy Gets killed the gay man because he said he death. was em he was embarrassed that that was was done on television. Well, he just wow. got out yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Um, now, I mean. I'm not saying it's good or bad that he's out because I mean maybe he served his time, maybe he learned. But from the article that I that I read, it didn't, doesn't seem like he did. So did he make comments um, in, the, to the, in the article? Did uh, they interview him? No, I was watching it on Good Morning America, um, and they didn't like say specifically. They were just talking to people that knew him. Mm. So I, I'm going to research that a little more and just kind of look up more articles to see how he feels now. I exactly. think that would be important to know. Okay, um, the thing that I'm looking at here is a Fox News, and some of the details oh, that they're reporting are slightly different. Alternative facts. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is Fox News. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Alternative news, yes. But, um, so, but the, the woman's name was Kiwi Herring, and she was, uh, like I said, she was distraught. She, I think, had been reporting this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. but before we go on any further, I want to talk, let's talk about you, Jelinski. I want you to tell people what it is you do. First of all, I think I a lot of people don't know you. Bedtime. Huh? I saved the world before bedtime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell us about what you do and then what, you're, what you want to do. Yeah, you're gonna Awesome. Well, a lot of what I do for me is really spiritual, and so I, I seek to bring about peace, love, and happiness in the world, so everything I do kind of connects back to that. And so I do a lot of work with um, the Resource Center, managing some empowerment programs, and also our HIV testing and STD testing programs. And so... Um, Big piece is HIV awareness because we do know it's definitely um, impacting the LGBT communities in, in several ways. Mm -hmm. and, um, trans individuals, black individuals are some of the most high risk. Um, and so I do a lot of work to make sure that we're meeting folks where they are. We can get them the necessary resources that they have, whether it's testing, treatment, prep, you name it. We try to make sure they're taken care of. And then outside of that, you know, I just try to, like I said, bring about more peace, love, and happiness. And with that is a lot of times education, I feel, you know, because a lot of uh, problems that we have, I think, stem from ignorance. You know, folks not willing to go into spaces and be transparent and be vulnerable and share. And so I try to cultivate those spaces in which we can engage in conversation that may make us uncomfortable. But hey, and that uncomfort will grow. And um, like Angel, I work with a, a, a Israel. Israel. Oh, <laughs> Israel. La, I wanted to call you La Luna. La Luna. That's La Luna. That's that okay too. With La Luna. Luna. That's his, no, that's his porn name. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. X2. <laughs> uh, so, no, my, yeah. my porn name is actually David Copperfield. Copperfield. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> You're going to make so it yeah, disappear. Working with Israel to create a show here at Space Studios. In Not which porn. Not porn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah. mean. We, do you have a porn <laughs> section? I mean, I've always wanted we'll to kind of create porn, too. Okay. It, this is the Dallas voice show, I can't <laughs> say. I used to manage porn stars, so I'm no oh. stranger to that area. So gotcha. Ah, talk about that offline. This is interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that part. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I created this show where we can talk about some issues um, facing us, whether it's sex. You know, I think that one of the biggest reasons why HIV um, is so rampant in communities is because we're in the closet about sex. You know, folks have sex. If sex didn't exist, none of us would be here. Right. That's so. the truth. We don't <laughs> want to think about your mom and dad, but yeah. 
it happens. And so um, just all those different issues that make us uncomfortable, you know, just going to those spaces. And there's um, a researcher, Dr. Brene Brown. I really love her work. She talks about shame resilience and being able to go through. I've not heard that term, shame, shame resilience. Talk about that a little bit. So it's about, you know, when you, um, you know, topics. So, so let's say sex, for example, again, you know, you have shame in talking about that. Or if it's, you know, your trans experience, you know, wh whatever it is that cuts you off, being able to stand in that storm and come out on the other side okay. You know, it may mold you and take punches and such, but you're going to be stronger as a result of it. Okay. I just had this vision sitting in my front of my TV listening <laughs> to uh, the commercials. And well, who's that lady who does, like, the live co Ilana? Oh, is that her I name? Iyana Venza. Iyana, we gonna have, or, yeah. we gonna have the gay tri <laughs> gender queer <laughs> Iyana. Fix it, my life. <laughs> yes. You gonna fix it for us, aren't you? I, I think try you to should do that. I think I, you, sh I think you probably could do that. Too. I tried to. One of the first people that I want to have, you know, we we didn't talk about this, but Mayor Mike Rollins, he's receiving the Hero of Hope Award. Oh, that'd be great. And you know, um, a couple years ago we had the porn about convention. Him. I don't want you to talk to him about his sex life, though. No, no, I okay. want to talk about the porn <laughs> convention that, oh, you know, that was blocked. Yes. You know, I, yeah. I think I talked to you, you know, when, yeah. when it was blocked, that I wanted to write an article, what was but blocked? I never. The porn convention? You know, they, had, they had, they had um, reserved the convention center. They had it here that like one, one year. One year, like I think they in 2015, they yeah. had it. And, and they reserved it last year. But then at the last minute said, oh, no, y'all going to have porn stuff. We don't want that in our convention. Oh, because center. none exactly. of us have sex in Dallas or right. Fort Worth. I don't. So, I mean, I, I love the Hey, mayor. don't bring Fort Worth in. That was all <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> I, would love I think, well. <laughs> I don't know if they even had the, the convention last year as a result of that, but I know that they were fighting trying to get yeah, here, but yeah. I haven't been following it. But this, just as an example, one of the conversations I would love to have, like, you know. I think that's a good idea. we get past that? And so yeah. I would be that's willing to That's one of the help. topics I want to talk about, too, on my show. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, think I think that would be a very, I think that's probably going to be one of the questions a lot of people have. That and genitalia. Yeah. That's most of the questions that I get. Yeah. And then they get surprised when I tell them in detail and they're like, oh, and I'm like, you asked. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted you to know, bitch. I told you. Right. <laughs> you I think asked. for me, the ultimate goal of pretty much everything I do is to help people cultivate the reality works for them. All, all too often in society, you know, we're told how to be. And like, I mean, I'm growing up all the time, even my hair, you know, a lot of people tell me, oh, you should cut your hair off. And I've had even family members, you're walking around looking like a question mark. What girl? Listen, if I want to like a question mark, that's my choice. I'm going to do Dude, it. Call so. me the Riddler bit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think this is cool. One of the things that we have to make sure and do is once, well, we need, we have two we know of, but when we have these shows, when you get yours going, when you get yours going, I want to make sure that in our gay agenda every week in the paper, we have a block that, that says, hey, remember every Friday from three to four, don't panic with it, Israel Luna, every Friday from four to five, DVTV in space, every, whichever day you're gonna do yours, you know. So you're gonna do like the transistor gay TV guy. Yeah, yeah right. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> for the, you know, for the space station gay shows, I think we should list those so people know that we have local people who are doing great things here. And you know, Israel's given us all an opportunity right. to really put some stuff out there. And, and try and get some things happening. Um, it's beeped at me. We've got to take another <laughs> break. When we come back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a minute because I never talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about a little journey I've been on the last couple of years. So right. when we come back, we'll, be, we'll, we'll talk about that. All right? I think Thanks. she's transitioning. <laughs> and I am so sorry. I got to go. Oh, that's okay.
Okay, we're back. We're back. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're gonna. It, Angel had to go, and uh, we're gonna see him again soon. I hope Monday. You're on MTD, M- <laughs> DVTV <laughs> in space. DVTV. Lord, just wash my mouth. Can't do a thing with it. <laughs> now so it's time I, for I'm talking with Tanny, <laughs> <laughs> right? So I told you I was gonna tell you all about a little journey I've been on. So I'm gonna just start in say late April, early May, 2015. And um, I was having some back problems. My back was hurting. I'm like, dang, it hurts. And Sandra's like, well, shut up and go to the doctor. You know? <laughs> right. Quit grappling. Do something about it. So I went to like an urgent care. And I'm like, my back hurts. Okay, we're going to give you some medicine, make it not hurt. But let's take some blood. Do some tests. I said, okay, whatever. A couple of days later, two or three days later, they call me back and they say, hey, look, your blood test, the tests show um, an elevated RF factor, which means... And I'm like, I don't know what that is. But they're like, that means you might have rheumatoid arthritis. That's mm-hmm. a sign of rheumatoid. I said, okay. They said, you need to see a rheumatologist. I said, okay. And they said, we'll call and make an appointment. It takes forever to get in to see a rheumatologist. So it was like July, I, th- I think it was 26 that year. Okay, that's when your appointment is. Okay, well, I'll go see them. Then on uh, like June 2nd, I uh, found out I had cancer. I had uterine cancer. So it's like, going to have cancer. I'm going to have a surgery in july like the 16th so i call him and hey i'm not going to make this appointment i kind of have other things to do okay go through uh, it was a breeze i mean i i almost feel guilty you know that my recovery was so easy i i didn't even use the pain pills they gave me so but by the end of the year december early december go in for a checkup cancer free yay everything yay great. yeah and no more problems so five to that yeah and then about Mm, October, November last year, I had been having some issues with my joints, with stiffness and pain, and it was getting worse. And again, Sandra's like, stop bitching and go to the doctor. <laughs> so I did. I made an appointment, went to see the doctor, and I told him about it, and he looks at my hands, and I described the symptoms, and he says, oh, yeah, look, you know, your hands are puffy, swollen. You've got rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to give you these pills, this anti-inflammatory to take until we can get you in to see a rheumatologist. We're going to take blood just to confirm. I'm like, okay. So we did all that. And then a few days later, two or three days later, he calls me back and says, no, ne- test are negative. You don't have rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Just keep taking those pills. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that was like end of the year. Last February, end of February, I'm, by this time it's really bad. I'm just getting worse. So I went to, back to the doctor and he's like, oh, well, let's try a different, different anti-inflammatory. Two weeks, I'm like, no, this ain't working. This is worse. This does not work at all. And we go back and forth. Finally, he prescribed like a week's worth of steroids for me. So I took this, and hey, this is great. This is helping. The swelling's down. I can use my hands. My feet aren't hurting. My legs aren't hurting. I'm doing better. And I call him, and he goes, yeah, but you can't keep taking steroids. You know, you, that you, that you can't do that. And I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, go back to the first anti-inflammatory. So I go back, and I've been taking that, and I'm just getting frustrated. By this time, I've decided, you know what, I'm just, I'm crazy, and a hypochondriac, and there's nothing really wrong, and or they would find it, right? Yeah. This is ridiculous. But I found a, a call the insurance, and hey, can I go to a, 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 a specialist without a referral? Yeah, you can. So then I had to find a rheumatologist that would take me as a patient without a referral. Hmm. And I did. So, um, end of like last week in July, that Monday, I went to the doctor and he tells me, I don't think you have diabetes. No, not diabetes. I don't think you have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, you maybe have diabetes that some, you know, you get diabetic nerve pain that presents that way. You might have lupus. I don't think you do, but you might, um, you know, gout, there are all these things that could be, we're going to do all of these tests, tests they don't normally do. We're going to find out what it is. We're going to treat it. I said, okay. Last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, I went in, and he said, okay, you don't have cancer. I said, that's good. You don't have diabetes. That's really good. I don't have to give up my Cokes <laughs> <laughs> or my, you know, my candy. You don't have lupus. No, that's good. You don't have gout. That's good. You do have rheumatoid arthritis. I'm like, well, damn. Mm. <laughs> I thought we were going to slide through, and you're just going to say, take this, you know, Psych medicine, because you're crazy, <laughs> but no. So they told me that I have l- rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. I also have osteoarthritis, which is what you get as you get older, and your joints wear down, and they hurt, you know, when the 
storms that come in because my knee hurts, mm. you know, the osteoarthritis. But rheumatoid arthritis isn't like that. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease where basically your body attacks itself and it attacks your joints and your connective tissues. And you see people who have their hands are deformed and they have those big knots on their joints. That's rheumatoid arthritis. But, of course, nowadays there are a lot of um, medications. I'm not worried about it because I know what it is. We're going to treat it. But here's the thing. The, we start out with this medicine called methotrexate. I'm going to take that for two months, eight weeks. And then they're going to add something else, and that's called a biologic. Hopefully we won't have to do that. So it's very expensive infusion. You go in, you get IVs, you have to take injections, all that. I don't do needles very well. So hopefully we're not going to even have to get to that stage, but we're doing the methotrexate, which is a chemotherapy because it was developed to treat cancer. So I'm going to start taking it today when I get home. Mm. Then I take it once a week, and I, so I'm going to take it on Friday, so that way if I get sick from it, like, you know, people get sick from chemo, well, you know, I've got the whole weekend to recover, and I can come back and be all right on by Monday. Because they said 24 to 48 hours. So I'm going to take that tonight for the first time. One of the things that could possibly happen is my hair might fall out. And I'm going to kind of confess that even though I do very little to actually style or, you know, do anything with my hair, I'm kind of proud of it. I have good hair. My name ain't Becky, but I do have good hair. <laughs> hey, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So my hair might fall out. And I told Sandra, my hair is going to fall out, damn it. I'm not going to look like some mangy dog. I'm going to shave my head. So this is why I'm telling this whole story, because I'm, I'm having an idea about this. Today it was, it was occurring to me. If I have to shave my head, I think I'm going to auction that off. Hmm. Let people either, you know, you pay me this much money to take a swipe on my head, or whoever has the highest bid gets to shave my yeah. head, and we can do it live on DVTV. Sure, something along, as and long donate as the money to Resource Center? Well, actually, I was going to give it to um, my wife, who is raising money for team and training, Leukemia and Lymphoma Societies, team and training. She is training to do a half marathon hmm. oh. in February, <coughs> and she has to raise, I think it's over $1,000. I don't know the exact amount, but she needs to raise over $1,000. That will go to them because she's doing this for her, her father who has uh, multiple myeloma, which is also a blood-borne cancer. Maybe we should do it during the, the Pride show. Oh, we right. to, we to, well, first of all, we got to make sure my hair's going to fall out because yeah. you ain't just going to shave my anyway. hair. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I can just shave it for and, fun. And if, and if you decide to do all of that, I say that we get you a big pageant wig. <laughs> Huge, like B-52s pageant. She's going to win Miss Gay U.S. of A. Texas yeah. pageant. <laughs> Only if there's like a tiara. That we yes. Have. Some crown. So now, no, I just came up with this today and I hadn't told anybody. So people that know me that are watching this are going, oh, good God. <laughs> that she had lost her damn mind. And, and I her made hair. Math. And her hair. But I might lose my <laughs> hair. But I think I'm going to yeah. do that. But yeah, you know, I want to... Um, I want to help her because she's raising money for something that's kind of a similar kind of deal, but it's for her father. It's for a friend of hers and a, a friend of a friend of ours that's had myeloma for some time. So we're gonna I want to do that. Well, I'll be sending out positive vibes that none of that has to happen. Good. Yes. But we can still raise money, but not yes. by cutting off my hair. Right. But but I wouldn't tell y'all that because that's you know. That's what I'm going to be going through, and if I start acting like stupid and looking weird, it's because of medicine. So I'm, I know the thing beeped us, but I'm wondering <laughs> if you thought about like any like holistic medicine or alternative like lifestyle changes. Um, we've been discussing that. Um, that you know, I need to exercise more and more regularly. Uh, change to a healthier diet and be more, be more. Uh, aware of those kinds of things. Someone suggested, oh, you know, gluten allergies can do that and things like that. So I'm going to do those things too, but I use my hands a lot. I'm right. a photographer. I don't, mm. I can't afford to lose you them. I type, I type, I write, yeah. and <laughs> I take photographs, <laughs> and I don't want to lose that. I mean, and that's kind of a, you know. So I'm going to I'm gonna do the other medicine, but I'm going to, we're going to do all we get. But part of it is vitamins too. Yeah. I've started taking uh, vitamin D. And minerals too. Get iron and yeah. all those good things. And um, 
one of the things that they give you to help mitigate any of the uh, side effects is, is called folic acid. So I'll be taking that as well. Already I'm taking that. So we are down to the, down to the end of the show here. We're going to come back for our two-minute closing. So uh, watch this commercial that Shannon's going to show you, and we'll be back. <laughs> Okay, we're back. We got like two minutes to wrap things up. So I don't know what on earth Israel might talk about. But <laughs> I don't know. What am I going to promote? I don't know. Uh, Tell me, bud. Oh, you know, the only thing I can think of is at the Texas Theater this coming Monday, starting at 730, we are screening three films. We are screening The Devil's Chain, Lesbian Strippers from Hell, and my film, Kicking Zombie Ass for Jesus, which is the companion piece to Ticked Off Trannies with Knives. So please go to lalunaentertainment.com to purchase tickets, and we will see you at the theater on Monday evening. The whole cast and crew is going to be there, including Willem Belli is flying in from L.A. And Angel, who was here earlier. Yep, yes. Angel. All right. And on Sunday, one of the programs I manage, United Black Element, will be celebrating its eighth year anniversary that's amazing so eight years of serving wow. the african-american community and raising words about hiv and it'll be at lofty spaces in the cedars which is 8015 montgomery street you can get tickets at ubedallas.org and then also fuse will be having a brunch from two to four at sue ellen's i'm cool. not sure the address is but it's in the neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's on throckmorton at cedar springs that yes. way yeah. <laughs> so and then also find me on Facebook, um, Jelinski S. Brown. Um, again, I just like to help people cultivate the reality that works for them. And if you need help with that, let me know. All right. And I'm Tammy Nash and I'm managing editor for Dallas Voice. And you can find me here every Friday or almost every Friday. And uh, I want to remind folks that on uh, the 15th of September, Friday, the 15th of September, we're going to be broadcasting live from the JR's patio, we're going to have hopefully Don't Panic and yeah. DVTV in Space live on the uh, from JR's that, that day for Pride Weekend. So y'all yeah. make plans to come out and hang out with us and uh, hope we'll see you there. Hope we're going to have Jelinski back, you know, on a regular basis to talk with us and, and things like that. So we have two <laughs> tickets. I don't think anybody answered the question in the comments, but I got a notice from someone telling me that they knew the answer. <laughs> But they were on YouTube, right? Yeah, they were watching where they couldn't comment. They were not on the, the live stream. 
Um, and the answer is... Tammy Nash was the very <laughs> first person to write an article about me, and it was about my very first project that I was doing through the cable access network called Boobs, Boys, and High Heels. So I'm going to deliver a couple of t free tickets to that person who knew that and uh, hope to see you guys. I've already got my tickets for zombies. Yeah. It, zombie ass, that's what I call <laughs> it. And I hope to see you all there, okay? We'll see you next week on DVTV. Have a good weekend. Bye, y'all. Bye.